a mask is like every day in Korea. You know, this is, it's just, you just have masks, you know? All right, cool. What's up? Uh, I'm Chad and, uh, you know, I'm here with, uh, with David uh, out of uh, Seoul, South Korea. And uh, David and I are working on a, um, a project together to help, uh, you know, distribute um, uh, PPE and testing equipment and similar um, from South Korea, uh, really around the world, uh, obviously in the midst of um, everything that's going on with COVID, the, um, the demand for these products is yeah. um, is significant and yeah. um, and the response in South Korea um, you know has been has been lauded as is uh, you know very positive and aggressive and um, and effective so uh, so Dave and I have been chatting about this and chatting about what's um, going on on the ground in, in South Korea and as they've started to reopen um, you know, characteristics of that, uh, new normal as we're calling it, um, you know, for businesses and otherwise, uh, of what they're, what they're doing, um, to protect people and, um, you know, avoid any future outbreaks, uh, of this virus as we all continue to, um, to manage it. So we decided we'd jump on and do this, which we felt, yeah. uh, would certainly help a lot of people, uh, kind of get the scoop of what's going on on the ground there and potentially use it, um, you know, as a guide uh, to, uh, to arrange your own plans for your own business or your own circumstances and, um, you know, uh, and really get a feel for what's kind of required and what the vision is for maybe a region that is a step or two, you know, um, uh, ahead than what yeah. we're experiencing, say in North America or, um, or else, uh, you know, or elsewhere. So, um, Dave, thanks for jumping on. Uh, I appreciate yeah. that. Um, yeah. maybe, you know, just kind of high level for people, you can give them a, a sense of kind of your background, um, sure. and, and the work you've, you know, been doing and the work you're doing there. And yeah. then, um, and then maybe we can dive in, uh, just a little deeper and kind of the, the yeah. South Korean experience, uh, with this virus, you know, yeah. through phases and kind of into your current phase. Um, and what's going on really just on the ground uh what type of tools you're using you know tracing and uh sanitization and you know prevention and all this kind of stuff because i'll just say this first uh from what i see here in in you know in canada and what i'm seeing or hearing elsewhere uh there's a lot going on in korea that doesn't seem to be happening in these other parts yeah. and you guys have really demonstrated the kind of sophistication of being the, the standard uh, yeah. we could hope to achieve elsewhere to try and limit the spread of this. Um, sure. So, you know, uh, thanks man for being on and I uh, appreciate it. And, uh, you know, uh, take it away if you want to kind of dive in, introduce yourself. Yes. So uh, absolutely. So Chad, thanks. Um, you know, th I think this is um, a great way to kind of get the message out. Right. So, I mean, obviously my background, um, so I am actually a Canadian kind of implanted into Korea now, you know, I've been here for about 10 years. Um, so my background is, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a technology guy. I've been involved in the telecom industry for, you know, 11 years. Um, I, I, um, had, you know, did a few startups. I had my own AR company, I had my own blockchain company, um, you know, kind of use those technologies and, and we have a, a, a media marketing advertising type uh, consulting agency. So that's what our company does right now. And um, in doing that, we actually connect with a lot of um, agencies, a lot of companies um, who, who uh, we consult on. And so one of the things that we have done, um, and it kind of ties into what we're doing now, is that you know we've always been helping um, our clients um, with sourcing or uh, procuring uh, new product lines or um, building out their network or, in, you know, uh, improving their image, right? Now, in doing that, um, as, as a consulting agency um, that provided consulting, you know, we started working with um, some companies that were, you could say in normal marketing circles, perhaps not non-marketable, right? Not very sexy. 
um, but you know, uh, companies that were doing making fat, uh, textiles called melt blown fabric, um, mm -hmm. you know, which at the time was not really that exciting. But right now it's high times because uh, melt blown uh, textiles are what's used in PPE and masks, right? And it's one of the most highly uh, sought after product on this earth right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and another company that we were working with, um, you know, they manufactured rapid tests for pregnancy tests, right? And they also um, uh, manufactured some chemical compounds and, you know, liquids. And they told us these are called, you know, uh, anti-tac antigens. And we said, you know, what are these things? And they said, well, you know, they go into these test kits called PCR test kits. And we had no clue what, what these were. Um, but as Corona started coming around, you know, they said, you know, these are some things that go into Corona test kits and, and whatnot. And, and so we started building relationships with test kit manufacturers to help market and, and position our, our clients. So um, how do we lead to now? Um, so, you know, so you're in doing it. well, so we'll say it. So like you're, you know, you're in it. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you're kind of uh, frontline basically, um, yeah. you know, helping move product from the, yeah um, i mean i mean through from the kind of high we'll say this from the kind of you know the high caliber of south korean manufacturing standards yeah. and helping yeah. uh move what's required into other parts yeah. of the world as a function yeah. kind of yeah the capacity I mean, and experience on the ground there yeah i mean it was it it all came very quickly, right? So, you know, we're working with these companies that have these fabrics and, you know, we're trying to figure out how do we market them, right? So, you know, we ask, what, where is your product used? They're like, oh, they're used in masks. And I mean, in Korea, masks have been, you know, a regular thing for a long time, right? Because we get yellow dust from China, you know, there's pollution, very densely populated, a lot of cars. So air quality is not so good. So people are already accustomed to wearing masks, right? So this is one of the, you know, things that, you know, I guess in, in our chat here, you know, I'll, I'll kind of mention, you know, as we go along, one of the reasons why Korea has been successful in kind of putting COVID to bed, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not gone, but, but you know, we've kind yeah, of put it, put it to bed and put it to rest a little bit, right? Um, so when, when Corona started to hit real hard in China, um, you know, obviously Korea being right, you know, very close proximity, you know, there's a lot of worries here, right? Um, and we saw a massive influx of, of uh, people from China um, coming to uh, buy uh, all the masks in Korea, right? Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a big thing um, at the time because, you know, Korea has a, has a huge supply of masks. Um, but Corona started hitting hard in Korea. Um, you know, it started out with like, you know, seven positive cases, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then all of a sudden one day it was like a thousand, right? Mm. Uh, 2,000, 3,000, it just started going up. And, and when that started happening, the, the fear factor here was like above and beyond, right? Um, we're the second highest um, um, number of cases in the world be, behind China. Um, all these countries started blocking, you know, export and travel and all these restrictions. Now, one thing that happened was, you know, uh, what I'm hearing around the world, obviously, you know, um, Canada, US, Europe is, you know, uh, countries and cities started locking down, right? Mm -hmm. Korea never really locked down, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, like everyone wore masks already, right? So mm -hmm. the um, government said, hey, everyone continue wearing your masks. But, you know, masks were in very short supply. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where our relationships with, um, you know, the, the filter manufacturers and the mass factory started to kick in. You know, um, a lot of our other clients and, and, and people we're working with are like, hey, you guys work with mask companies, you know, help us get these things. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and we're helping, you know, government agencies. We're helping, you know, um, corporations. Um, we're helping them source masks for their employees, you know, people in their factories, people in, in you know, just like just staff who, who are out there, right? Mm -hmm. Who could be potentially exposed to uh, COVID. Um, and then the government nationalized masks and um, basically uh, they put kind of a, a calm and ease for the consumer because everyone could buy, buy a mask at a pharmacy um, and there was no mad rush and panic, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was no craziness here in Korea at, at the supermarket for toilet paper. People weren't fighting over that kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. there was ample supply of that. Um, you know, um, 
uh, shelves because, on. Is that yeah. because there was a uh, restriction on shipping toilet paper as well, or how does that? No, there wasn't. Right? Toilet there wasn't, paper right? things become a, a huge joke. But I'll tell you, yeah. after a couple yeah. months of doing this, and you see how much just not to let's head off not too yeah. far down that path. But you know, after you've been kind of isolating yeah. for a while, yeah. yeah, I think everybody realizes how much t- toilet paper they actually maybe go through. Would <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like. Some you know, there it is, it. right? I mean, like, okay, yeah. it, you can see why it's yeah. maybe a priority, right? Uh, yeah. And it was carrying on. So there was not, like, a restriction on any toilet paper no. or anything? Yeah. Just, and, you guys and, had a lot of supply, I guess. Yeah. And and basically the government, you know, they, you know, there was concerns, obviously, with, you know, like, churches and places of gathering and stuff mm-hmm. like that, right? So they, they started to, they, they made announcements, you know, limit, you know, like, get the public gatherings of, you know, more than two, 200 people, 500 people, et cetera, you know, big groups over 20. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then they put, closed down schools. There was a, there was a big, um, I think it was a spiritual or religious gathering or something, right? Yeah. That, that yeah. A, like, a um, better case, wasn't it? I mean, so it's, it was a religious, how do I say it? Religious entity, right? You know, the right. controversial. Okay. Some people think they're a sect. Some people think they're, you know, they're like a club or a group or something. We'll just yeah, yeah. We so won't, we so, won't kind of delve into that kind of judgment. So so that. there was so one thing with Korea is they uh, when Corona hit hard, they were doing a lot of testing, right? They're yeah. testing everywhere, right? Yeah. Like so, if if there was a positive case, uh, so let me go back to this first. So mm-hmm. in Korea. Uh, the government decided that um, personal privacy was secondary to um, public safety, mm. right? So this is something that probably could not happen in North America, um, right. probably could not happen in Europe, right? Um, so, so this is what mm. the, everyone talks about, like contact tracing and, and, and all of that, right? So, so what happens in Korea is, you know, there's test sites everywhere, um, and, and if you get tested, and uh, you turn out to be positive. Basically, um, everything about you is now um, uh, the government will will track, right? Your cell phone mm-hmm. records, uh, the the GPS location of every place that you've been. They'll mm-hmm. match that with um, your credit card uh, usage. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll they'll take you know your social security number and they will put all that together. And mm-hmm. so, if you're a positive case and 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 what they'll do is they'll track your history and then they'll, they'll publicize it. They won't publicize who it is. They'll mm-hmm. say positive case number 51 um, uh, resides in this neighborhood mm-hmm. um, and visited all of these locations um, in the past 14 days. Wow. Right? And so what they'll do then is, you know, the emergency kind of disaster response messages that people get on their, on their cell phones. Well, yeah. we get this message like, five, six times a day, right? And during the massive spike in COVID, the phone was going off the hook, right? National disaster is there's a positive case number 3001, 3002, 3003. And they publish everywhere they've been. And basically they say, if you've been to any of these places on these days or these times, please call this hotline. And if you call the hotline, an ambulance will come in and pick you up and take you to a testing center, right? Wow. Yeah. And, 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 or you could go to a testing site, right? And they tell people to, you know, voluntarily isolate, et cetera, et cetera. And people were listening. Now, what happened with this religious organization? Wait, wait, so, and people yeah. were listening. People were like, listening. What was the, when this is implement, uh, implemented, Yeah. what was the rub like? Was there a bunch of resistance where people kind of like basically tuned in and saying like, okay, we're just here to participate. This is for like a period of time. We're cooperating. Well, I mean, what was that first pulse? Because well, well, see, the thing is, like, so so this wasn't the first time for Korea to to experience this as well, right? Mm-hmm. So a few years back, we had MERS, right, Mid East mm-hmm. Respiratory Syndrome, and I I remember um, uh, the company I worked for, one one major conglomerates, uh, our office was very close to one of the major hospitals mm-hmm. that was. Um, doing a lot of testing and had a lot of cases. So it was kind of scary. And at that time, everyone started wearing a lot of masks and, you know, washing their hands, using sanitizer, all this stuff. So uh, the people were, were kind of prepared because they've been through it before. The government was prepared because they've done it before. Right. Mm-hmm. But the thing is it, the mayor's uh, uh, kind of phase was not as you could say um, 
as um, aggressive as as the COVID um, COVID pandemic situation, right? But regardless, uh, we the government was somewhat ready, right? And people were ready, right. and people were aware, right? So the thing about Korea is this: Korea is densely populated, right? So it's a population of roughly fifty million. Um, the country is very small, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, I don't know if you guys know about Korean food, but if you've had Korean food, you know, there's a lot of share dishes, right? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's, it's a very ripe culture to to pass on COVID to people, right? You know, you're eating right. at the table, you're sharing dishes, and right. you know, right. saliva and all this stuff, right? And and very close proximity, like you know, you're on the subway, you're you're people are like rubbing against each other. Um, buses. Yeah. It's just, it's just a very dense populated place. It's intimate. So, I mean, let's say it. It's yeah. like socially intimate. Is it maybe yeah, like, like, like rush hour, right? right? Like rush hour. If you, you know, like there's people everywhere, right? right. Um, and and but yet everyone was wearing masks. Um, you know, people had sanitizers or their sanitizers everywhere. Um, and and these are the things that kind of help control it, right? Again, people everybody also kind of had some of this already. You know, yeah, right. we we yeah. were used to it, right? Right. People stayed home. Um, they decided not to go out. Um, the first time ever. So Korean corporations are are notorious for. I got a mosquito here. Um, uh, notorious for um, long working hours, right? Right. Notorious for long working hours. Okay. But when COVID hit, there was a shift. Companies started allowing people to remote work. Um, telling people, you know, uh, go home, uh, don't come to the office, um, because the large corporations were also finding, like, you know, pockets of, of, of positive cases, right? And it was right. putting people at risk. Um, so that was a shift. So one big thing that I, I noticed that was very different from, from Korea um, that I experienced was the fact that large corporations, um, these companies where people work, like, basically 16 hours a day just in the office, no one was in the office. Everyone was at home, right? So it was great because there's no traffic in the roads. Like in Korea, it's crazy for traffic. And I loved it because there's no traffic. But the thing is, the fact that everyone stayed home, the fact that schools were closed, um, it really helped um, kind of calm Corona a bit, right? But the yeah. thing is this, even though everyone was staying home and schools were closed, people were still out in the shopping malls People were in restaurants. Sure, a lot of restaurants kind of were, were losing customers because most people are trying to stay home. But the thing is, people were still out and about doing their mm. daily thing, right? Mm. So this is something that was different than um, in North America or in Europe when it started to hit. They started you know, shutting down cities and telling people you could only go outside once a day to go get essential stuff and maybe go for a mm. one walk. Uh, you know, we could do anything we want, really, right? right. As long as we, we, we maintained uh, a certain social distance and, and kept ourselves in a non-vulnerable state, right? So now going back to this religious uh, uh, entity, so there was a lady, um, I believe she got tested positive. I don't know the full story, but she got tested and I think they told her to self-isolate, but she decided she wanted to go to church. Um, and, and this church... Um, they all sit like, like a, a large amount of people, let's say like two, 300 people in a room mm -hmm. and, you know, they pray and, and they sit real close next to each other, hold hands and all this stuff. And she basically I mean, became, a I mean, this is common. Yeah. You know, I, I, for my it's everyday life, right? A lot of, yeah. Right. I mean, like a lot of people find strength yeah. in community, right? Yeah. And a lot yeah. of people um, are very used to being, just around other people. Sure, sure. They maybe haven't developed kind of that independent or maybe solo minded yeah. aspect, you know, of themselves. Myself, I'm a bit more independent. So like mm. if I'm hanging out on my own, I'm usually as comfortable as with other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah, a lot of people aren't necessarily like that, right? Mm -hmm. So kind of common social behavior. Sure. Just to go in absolutely. a room and hang out and yeah, you know, and, yeah. touch people, high five with... people, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And so she did that, right? Uh, yeah. And she became a super spreader. Kind spread. of like yeah. early days, right? And then that became a catalyst. That, yeah, that was like 
like the catalyst, right? That was kind of like the boom, right? Like, right. you know, she started spreading it, like, not purposely, but, you know, she went to church, it got spread to like, you know, a bunch of people around her, and then the people right. around them and around them and around them. And it started going from like 40 cases to like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and 1.7 thousand. Like it was, it was scary, right? It was right. starting to get scary. Yeah. But even still, we were still getting the alerts on, on, on our cell phone saying, don't go here. And what happens is when, when, when they identify a place where a positive case um, has been, mm -hmm. they shut that place down for a day. The government goes in, sanitizes it, you know, fogs it, sanitizer, everything. And then it's open again. Okay. Right. And, and so tomorrow you could go to that place of business and you could be rest assured that there's no Corona there because they sanitize the heck out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so now. And that's know, a government everyone, program. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, people might be wary of going there because you know, they're like, Oh, there was a positive case there, but mm -hmm. not really the case. Right. Because, you know, right. after, you know, the, you know, health authorities go in there and desanitize the place. It's safer than ever, right? Right. Now, um, in terms of daily life, now, how how does Corona not spread as quickly in Korea than other countries, right? Mm -hmm. When Korea is so densely populated, so many people. So one of the big things is important mass. question. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're asking this question, right? And then yeah. Yeah. also eager to kind of get back yeah. to you know uh, their faith yeah. or community events or exactly to say that anyone loses faith i just mean like <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. practicing their faith right yeah as a community um supporting one another and so yeah how has that been different for you guys obviously and then um you know yeah how how uh how uh, how do you get back to it right um yeah the experience and then both how do you kind of reopen responsibly and these are big questions everybody's asking right yeah, yeah. So, so you know, a lot of lot of stuff have been done online. Obviously, like what we're doing in this chat, right? So, you know, I, I, from what I heard, like even you know, religious ceremonies and like you know, sermons and preachers talking to their you know congregations were doing it online. Um, you know, my kids, um, they're they're out of school, but they're doing school online, right? Right. You know, yeah. um, everything's uh, distance education all this stuff, even like workers are, you know, they're doing conferencing and teleworking and, um, you know, things were getting done, right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, kind of a new way of life. But the thing is in Korea, people were still out and about. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, still right. Out. Huge. Yeah. yeah. It's a huge, uh, huge detail. I mean, yeah. personally, I didn't realize that, you know, yeah. I mean, it's it, the thing is everyone wears a mask. One, the, one of the most important things is a mask. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and the thing is, you know, there's different types of masks, right? You know, there's, you know, everyone talks about N95 particulate respirators and, you know, and then they talk about surgical masks and all this stuff, right? But, you know, you know, I was talking to, you know, some of the guys we work with, the mask guys and, you know, doing some reading and, and found out the differences, you know, because, you know, it's kind of confusing, right? So sure. a surgical mask is, is, is not meant to protect the person wearing it, but it's meant to protect the person, like the patient, right? Mm -hmm. From know the doctor from you know accidentally like you know um, um, spitting on them or you know things like that right um, but a particulate respirator is meant to protect the guy wearing it right so so you know we started to you know in Korea we started to learn about these things like you know a KF94 mask is a respirator helps against like you know um, you know dust and all this stuff but it, it helps protect you against virus and so everyone's wearing a mask Right. Mm -hmm. Everyone's wearing a mask wherever you go. Everyone's wearing a mask. And if you see a guy who's not wearing a mask, you're kind of like, hey, what's that guy thinking? Right. You know, he's not wearing a mask. And some places will not let people in if they don't have a mask. Right. But the cool thing about it is in Korea, in some places like a department store or something, if you're not wearing a mask, they'll give you a mask so you could come in. Right. Because they don't want right. to offend you. Right. Right. You know, you know, say, hey by the way, you can't come in. What do you mean I can't come in? Oh, you don't have a mask. And so instead of having that. Yeah. So internally, everyone's participating in yeah. wearing a mask, you know, indoors yeah. minimum, correct? Yeah. yeah. And kind of and social so, centers. So that's, so that's a big one. Yeah. And then the second one, I think, is uh, the testing, right? So they're testing everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, 
you know, tests are accessible. Um, you know, if, if you feel like, you know, you're just kind of nervous on your own and you want to go to like a, a testing clinic and you get it done, you know, you probably pay like a hundred dollars and you get it done. Right. Right. Now that's, that's on your own. But you know, if you've been to a place where there was a positive case or you've been around someone, um, and you call the specific, you know, government hotline, you know, the testing is free, right? Because it's, it's, it's a matter of public safety, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you get isolated and all this stuff. If not, you get rest assurance that you're, you, you don't have it, right? And then you could go into doing your social distancing and washing your hands and wearing your mask and just, uh, you know, going about your day. And then after that, it's, it's about what, like, kind of like the things that you, you wouldn't really imagine in Canada or the U.S., right? So and I, I think, you know, we were talking about this before, right? You know, so I was talking about how they have, you know, um, these protective films um, on, on, on uh, they, they lay it over the, the buttons on an elevator, right? Right. And, you know, everyone touches the elevator buttons, right? But the thing is, you know, your fingers could be full of virus, right? Right. Well, one thing is the elevator has um, hand sanitizer in there. Okay. Right? So you hand sanitize when you're in the elevator. You press the button. Sanitizer. But, well, you were saying sanitizer is everywhere. Sanitizer is everywhere. Like right. everywhere you could possibly imagine yep. to put a it's bottle of sanitizer. It's just there. Like right. a bottle of sanitizer is just like sitting there, right? You right. Know? And it has no owner. It's just sitting there and it's basically, hey, welcome. If you're passing by and you want to, um, you know, sanitize your hands as you're walking by, please do right. so, right? Right. And, and if it's all used, someone will come and refill it, right? So the thing is restaurants, you know, banks, um, shopping malls. Um, you know, gas corner stations. stores, yeah, gas stations yeah. like the McDonald's, you know, Burger King, like just like any anywhere that a person would go, there yeah. is a sanitizer there, right? Right. And, and so, everybody's everybody's providing that. And then yeah. this other element is about uh, contact points. Yeah. So yeah. the elevator buttons, door yeah. handles, door handles, shopping carts. Um, Nerd pops, yeah. And where I was kind of um, alluding to the, um, mm-hmm. you know, the gas pump. Yeah. Right. Yeah. These have been um, contact points. For so, so the gas pump. Bracket it from, right? Yeah. So the gas pump, they don't actually put something on there. They actually put these um, clear plastic gloves, disposable gloves, okay. and they're they're on like a like a hook. And they're hooked on to like the gas pump, right? Okay. So you take one of those, you put it on, you can pl- pump your gas. Yeah. So you're not, there's no contact there, right? And then and you take you it off it, and you throw it, throw it away. As soon as you're in the back. garbage right there, right? Right. Um, and, you know, so, so, you know, I sent you guys. I've been low. Of I haven't moved uh, too much. Yeah. The last <laughs> couple months. I've been walking if I'm outside more and uh, I've been kind of preserving the gas in my tank but i've been sure. thinking about that like what is my fill-up experience <laughs> look yeah like? yeah yeah I mean, it's not even funny it's just you kind of just chuckle kind of imagining how you're gonna yeah. pull that off so that's yeah. interesting right yeah absolutely like so so anywhere that people are touching right um they yeah. have like you know like kind of antimicrobial films um and they have like sanitizers there, you know, so if you did touch something, why don't you sanitize or why don't you sanitize before you touch, right? Yeah. So it's, it, it's kind of up to the person, right? You know, like, you know, I, I sent you guys the picture, you know, we went to the, the supermarket and mm-hmm. all the shopping carts are lined up, right? But on all the handles of the shopping carts, they have this like disposable plastic film, right? Mm-hmm. And so what that means is instead of you touching like, a raw um, shopping cart that someone else might have touched and maybe they left Corona or other germs. It's clean with a, a fresh new clear film or sometimes mm-hmm. copper infused or whatever. And, mm-hmm. and it's there for you to use. And then when you are done your shopping and you put it back at the cart return, uh, the staff of the supermarket will come and peel it off and they'll mm-hmm. replace them with new ones. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they have like these self, self-serve kind of stations where if you accidentally remove the plastic film, you could 
reapply it, right? Okay. So these are ways to help reduce um, people's fears. One is that this um, uh, facility, this um, uh, retailer is taking precautions to help protect their customers. Right. All, all uh, people that work in these places have masks. They're all wearing gloves, right? Yeah. They're sanitizer everywhere. So, yeah. so customers could go into these places, rest assured, right? So, so this is about getting back to every day, getting people regular again, you know, getting them into the grocery stores, you know, getting them into, you know, I don't know, libraries, getting into places, right? right? You know, restaurants, um, all these places. And so, so Korea, like South Korea, um, it was like full buy into that, right at right off the start, hmm. right. Yeah. It, so it, it so was just Korea stayed open, but everybody yeah. was following those protocols. Sure, basically absolutely. everywhere, like right, right from like yeah. step one. Yeah, yeah. Which no. has had obviously a huge impact. I mean, we could suggest at minimum. I'm not a doctor, you know, mm -hmm. immunologist or anything like that, but yeah, you know. We could logically yeah. deduce that that's had a positive impact, it would appear, and that's ongoing to this day, which Absolutely. is called to keep this kind of contained and down, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You wanted to add some more there. Let's revisit that in a sec. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, some more examples of mm -hmm. like that film. We can talk about kind of copper and why that's being used in a minute, but um, yeah. some examples, like you said, the elevators, mm -hmm. uh, shopping carts uh, push door doors. Handles? are you putting this uh, sorry yeah. kind of doors yeah like you know you know like you know sometimes there's doors where you push to open there's like a metal piece you push oh, it yeah, right. you push, or push yeah. or pull yeah they have it there they have it you know on like countertops at like banks and stuff where people kind of rest their arms you know right. um, anywhere that is like a, a major contact point or touch point that people like very random different people are touching on on regular basis right. um they they lay out this film now um some of these films have you know i think you mentioned um, you know copper lining and whatnot because copper has you know kind of um antimicrobial or virus killing uh, capabilities right um, right so let's talk about copper just for a second and come back yeah. to the other stuff so that's interesting and that's the case yeah um we think of like copper cups and bowls and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't really know the, um, the implication of eating out of a copper you know, mm. bowl per se, but yeah. this is copper infused in like plastics and, you know, yeah. vinyl so it's like, and stuff like that. So it's that. like, you know, like transparent, like film, like plastic right. film, with like a, a coating of copper on it. Right. Right. You know, it's infused with it. Um, so, so every time someone touches it, you know, that touch, you know, basically within like five to 10 seconds, the, the copper components um, uh, basically kill that uh, bacteria. Is that um, now that fast? It's five to 10 seconds contact? That's, that's what they say, right? Like there's right. some tests that say that, right? I guess it depends on the product and whatnot, but gen yeah, and generally speaking, that's the, yeah, that's the, um, that's the spec, the right? science and the philosophy around using yeah. copper. Right, and yeah. infusing it um, in gloves and films and all this type of yeah. stuff, yeah. and then basically draping it everywhere we can. Yeah, that we're connecting or crossing paths or you know yeah. mutually using. Yeah, I, I actually you got something there. I, actually, <laughs> I see you. Sorry, I see you, Sorry you looking around, kind of. Yeah, like you got something that you know close by. Yeah. Yeah. So. So these gloves, right? So these gloves. So, you know, people walk around with nitro gloves, right? And latex gloves. And it's really hard to um, wear for a long time because you can't, it doesn't breathe, right? Right. Um, and, and, and they're best for people who are kind of in extreme situations. Like this glove, it's fabric, textile fabric that is infused with copper. Right. right? So it's, it's breathes, it's, it's flexible, right? And, and, you know, a product like this is being positioned to people who work at like cash registers, cashiers that in contact with a lot of people. They touch money and touch credit cards and things like that. Right. Um, delivery guys, right? Because the copper components in here 
kill the virus, right? Mm. And, you know, uh, you know, the DHL guy, the post office guy, right? You know, the bus driver, the taxi driver, right? And these are like non-medical um, kind of civilian type things, right? And, okay. and these, yeah, I mean, something they're like possible, this. And they're, they're washable too, didn't they? They're washable. You can reuse them. Not to so get like, like visuals, specifically right? into like a product plug here per se, but, but yeah. they are. I mean, that's yeah. an example, right? Which is yeah. sitting, I mean, which is sitting like, right next no. to you to share. So like, you yeah, know, yeah. Like, I mean, sense, right. It's an example. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even myself, like, you know, in, in, in kind of the beginning there, um, when it was going crazy, you know, I, I was wearing these gloves like every day. Right. right. You know, like I, I put them on in the, in the morning before I, I left home, I had my mask yeah. and I'm out the door. Right. Yeah. I took them off when I'm in the car. And then, you know, I pop them back on if I'm going to be outside, if I'm going to touch doors or anything like that. I just wanted to be careful, right? You know, so, uh, you know, everyone's trying to be careful. Everyone's, uh, you know, doing their part. But, you know, it's, it's, it's what um, companies are trying to do to stay open, right? Yeah, so, sure. a, so a yeah. lot of corporations, you know, a lot of retailers, they're, they, they're going the extra mile to make sure that people are just protected, right? Right. And it's, it's also, you know, a lot of companies also fear that it could potentially be liability issues, et cetera, right? Like, you know, there's a department store in uh, Korea, like one of the busiest department stores in Korea, right? So there were a few cases where um, uh, positive cases, people visited those department stores. Mm -hmm. So basically, as soon as that became public notice, the department store shut down for a day, right. they disinfected, right? And, and obviously people who might have been at the shopping mall um, got contacted, right? Mm -hmm. And they said, you better get tested mm -hmm. and you better isolate, right? Because you might, you might uh, be someone who has corona or you might be a spreader, right? Mm -hmm. And so the response is, is just very quick here in Korea, right? right. Um, and, and people know what's going on. They're aware um, and, and, and they try to be safe, right? Let's talk about the... Um the retail component for a sec, as you're yep. just referring to uh, a department store. What are yeah. you seeing in department stores there? When you stayed open, yeah. Yeah. and also now, um, for people to shop while this was going on, what, yeah. uh, what are some of those protocols for kind of retailers and stuff that are, you know, yeah. reopening so and thinking of reopening, things like that? Well, see, the thing is, in Korea, they never closed, right? They just okay. never closed. Yeah. The only time they closed was to disinfect and sanitize. Well, we right? have like a chasm to kind of jump over here, right? Yeah, yeah. People want to uh, reopen uh, responsibly, safely. Yeah. And um, we're kind of going from zero, you know, back to mm -hmm. 60, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like, like so 100, right? to kind of yeah. get back to shopping and living I mean, kind of normal lives. So like what I realize it's, it's, it's a little bit extra effort on everyone's part, right? One is if I'm someone that wants to go and shop, it's yeah. a little bit extra effort on my part to um, wear a mask, um, be cognizant of other people, you mm -hmm. know, wash my hands, sanitize mm -hmm. um, and, and keep my distance. Right. Mm -hmm. And then on, on the other part from like a, let's say a retailer or a restaurant perspective, you know, to be proactive, right? Um, you know, maybe have sanitizer at the entrance, right? Maybe have uh, sanitizer at the cashier desk, right? You know, maybe have sanitizer at, I don't know, like uh, at the bar or something, right? Because, um, you know, like if you go to a bar or a pub, you know, people stand around, have a drink or whatever, but you know, if they're sanitized there, maybe, maybe they'll just be compelled to, you know, try it out, right? right. They'll pump it and try it out. Okay, I'm sanitized. I'm good, right? right. Yeah. Grab my drink, right? It's just, it's just, you know, if it's there, people will be compelled to use it. And I think it's that, that it's, it's a psychology of it as well too, right? So, right. you know, I was going, just about to go up an escalator and in front of the escalator was a little, like a, like a tea, tea table mm -hmm. and it had two bottles of sanitizer. Right. Mm -hmm. And one was the gel type and one was the foam type. Right. And before I got on that, on that escalator, I kind of stopped there and I looked and I'm like, there's these two different kinds. Right. Mm -hmm. And 
and what should I what should I try, right? right. So you know, I was compelled to sanitize my hands before I got on the escalator, right? right. And and they have a little sign there. It says, you know, please feel free to use the sanitizer if you wish, right? right. And and so, I mean, it's a big thing, right? It's just that. So, yeah, so it's, from, it, it's really baking it into the lifestyle. Yeah, and it's yeah. kind of like, you know, good social habits. But yeah. these are the norm over there, like that, masks and yeah. all this. This is this is the norm. Um, yeah. I think accepting some of these new norms has mm -hmm. been a point of resistance in some yeah. respects. Like, and I think, so things like, you know, contact tracing, there's like some, you know, privacy issues there. Big there's time. some sensitivities um, for sure. Have you gone in um, to any retailers and like tried on clothes and done all that kind of stuff yourself? Oh, yeah. Like, the, yeah. I mean, for you, you're going to be like, of course, I just bought a bunch of new jackets today and shoes. Yeah. And but for me, but I'm like, I haven't yeah. gone anywhere near that. So, <laughs> like, you know, I hear what they're, you know, trying to do, but what is, mm -hmm. What's the nature of yeah, that? So, kind of so again, like, you know, you know, you guys never that, closed. I mean, this is a big takeaway in one, yeah. one thing for me, because I never realized that was the case. Yeah. And I'm also not trying to frame this discussion in any particular way. I'm just mm. basically saying I have not gone into a store to shop. Yeah. Um, I'd like to, mm. I'd like to feel comfortable to do it. And by a store, I mean like, you know, a clothing store. Sure accessories or whatever you know not just the supermarket right yeah which kind of took me weeks to get into to try and do that um, yeah. well. and again like it's not funny but it's just it's, it's almost yeah. like a, a chuckle of just the kind of surreal nature of the reality and you yeah. know we're in right now um yeah. but i'd like to go back to a clothing store and yeah feel safe trying something on yeah, you guys yeah. kept doing that the whole time. So like we kept doing it. But you know what's what's also interesting is so Korea is one of the most uh, mobile countries in the world, right? There's mm -hmm. actually more phones. So I'm a telecom guy. So there's more phones than people in this country, right? Wow. Um, and 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 the thing is, you know, mobile e-commerce is huge, right? So the right. thing is, in, in Korea, um, if you order something online, it could come to you that same day, right? right. Or, or yeah. max it'll take is like two, three days, right? And if it takes three days, you have reason to be upset that it took too long, right? Okay. <laughs> in Korea, yeah. right? Fair so enough. the thing is, so there's this massive, like, there's this massive, like, movement where people just order stuff online, right? Okay. And, like, you could be at the supermarket or you could be at the mall mm -hmm. and the shopping mall and you see something and you could just, and you probably, some people would just buy it online and they won't even pick it up at the store. Right. Right. So the thing is, essential supplies, like, you know, like things, like maybe you didn't want to go out to the market because the local supermarket had um, uh, a positive case, right? You know, um, you could you could order, like, you know, the toilet paper, the, you know, the sanitary products, the food, like the vegetables, right? Mm -hmm. You know, 6 a.m. in the morning, if we open the door, you know, the, the fresh vegetable and fruit are, you know, sitting at our doorstep, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I ordered it the night before. Mm -hmm. um you know like diapers and like you know baby formulas if you order it in the morning it'll be at the door in the afternoon right mm -hmm. so so when people had to stay home they they just ordered things online right now mm -hmm. the guys who are doing the deliveries and you know there was talk that you know we're putting these type of guys at risk you know do we increase do, does the country need to increase their wages and stuff like that but mm -hmm you know, it, it just worked out, right? Because there's less people out there and only guys that are really moving are guys who are delivering goods, but they got gloves, they have masks, you know, they sanitize and, and, and they're covered, right? Mm. So, so it's the lifestyle is, is, it was just like the way, the, the patterns, the behaviors of people, the lifestyle, it was just enabling um, the country to be um, protected in, in, for lack of better terms, right? And 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 to yeah, help and you with, with full buy-in, I think that's just one of the big takeaways here. You know, yeah. everybody was, or from this discussion, yeah. but everybody's just you know acknowledged and participating in that. Yeah. There's still some fighting and division uh, yeah. in the West about like. When I say the West, I mean 
a bit farther west, <laughs> we'll say, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, North I, America, I, I, like, uh, you know, about whether someone wants to wear a mask or, yeah, you know, use sanitizer or social distance or whatever. Sure, um, sure. Social distancing, that was a protocol in South Korea as well, I guess, when this was starting up? It, it was. Like, I mean, so we have Costco here too, right? And, you know, like, if you go to Costco, you know, there's there's a place where they sell the pizzas and all that stuff, right? You know, you can right. eat the hot dogs and stuff. They took out all the tables, right? You know, um, you know, Starbucks okay. spaced, yeah. you know, spaced this, the tables uh, a certain distance. You know, yeah. they started putting, like, the, the, the tape, tape marks on like tape on where the lineups usually are where people usually stand you know right behind each other right they put tape marks like stand here so you put some distance between you right, right. um uh, like the subways in korea you can't ride the subway without your mask so if you're not wearing a mask they don't let you on the subway okay. um you know, uh, again going back to retailers some places they have they have like you could say it's kind of like a, a security desk, but it's a desk and there's a thermal detector uh, tied to a computer that takes all, that's recording all the data, right? Mm. Um, when you walk by, it checks your temperature and there's a sign there that says, please have your mask and, mm. and there's sanitizer on that table, right? And there's a guy sitting there. And if you're not wearing a mask, you'll say, hey, excuse me, um, you know, uh, in order to go inside, you need to have a mask on. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I don't have a mask. Oh, then you can't come in. Well, it's actually, oh, you don't have a mask. Uh, we have some complimentary three plies. Um, right. You know, we don't want to offend you, right? Um, sorry, you know, because you could be a good customer. Here, here you go. By the way, sanitize your hands, right? And just, you know, because we're all doing and, it. Yeah, and it's respect. Right. So, right. so a, a restaurant that I went to. Um, so it's. It's about extra effort as well too. So one restaurant I went to, so we, so restaurant, right? Because right now in some 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 parts of the world, you know, who's going to a restaurant right now? You can't. They're closed, right? Right. Um, so we went to this restaurant, and the the guy at the front, um, the cashier desk, the host, he said, "Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to take your temperature." So he takes out like a thermometer, non-contact. Okay, you're good next person next person next person okay great and then they give you instructions so um except for when you're eating can you please keep your mask on okay so so you know the guy says that and it's like oh okay right, right. and so right. and so it's it's not like oh, is this guy telling me to keep my mask on right it's like um you know if except for when you're eating please keep your mask on and it's just about respect right and it's just about you know um, making sure that these places can stay open so that people right. can continue. Right. And then there's sanitizer everywhere. Like you go to the washroom, the restroom, there's sanitizers in there, but actually in the restroom, you could just wash your hands. Right. But right. still after you wash your hands, you can sanitize and you can go out. It's just, it's just that thing. Right. Right. And it seems right. to be a major trend. And on the door, there's like a antimicrobial film. So even if you touch it, you know, um, you're fine. Right. Right. And then the masks. You were talking yeah. about um, KF94. So yeah. Let's talk about those masks for a sec. Um, yeah. You've told me before, but the difference between like the KF94 and an N95 that yeah. people might be more familiar with in North America, they're comparable. Yeah. They're, so they're give or take the same in a layman way to describe it. You know, what's. What's like the yeah, definitely. So, okay, so understand. So you could you could say they're like pretty much the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, so KF ninety four is like the Korean uh, Korean KFDA approved mask standard in Korea, right? Right. Now, um, everyone knows about N ninety fives in North America. You know, three M N ninety five and all these other N ninety fives. And that's obviously the standard and that 95 learning, stands for learning, learning quickly. Yeah. And, right. and so it's, it's, it's a um, filtration rate, right? It's the mm -hmm. effectiveness of the filter in mm -hmm. the mask. Right. Mm -hmm. So when um, Corona hit really hard in the U S and North America and Europe, et cetera, 
you know, and there's a shortage of masks. They said, well, you know, there are these global standards around the world that um, provide, you know, um, you know, equivalent protection, right? And KF94 is one of those. Okay. Um, and, and, and so everyone knows about the N95 and everyone knows about in Europe, there's like FFP2, FFP3, FFP1, et cetera, right? But the N95 equivalent is FFP2. And so Korea's KF... FFP2 in Europe. Is the FFP. P FFP2 is the equivalent of N95. An N95. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. And and basically the KF94 is uh, exact equivalent to an FFP2, right? Okay. Now the difference between an N95 and a KF94 is that 1%, right? Right. So 1% of um, filtration, right? right? Of that uh, filter performance. But, you know, many of the masks, um, KF94 masks in Korea that are approved, they actually have a filtration um, rate higher than 95%, like some right. of 90, 97, 98, 99, right? Right. Um, so um, the thing is, they are equivalent or could be considered better than some N95s, right? right. Um, and, and you could say it's the same thing, basically. Yeah, yeah good. Just to kind of clarify a bit on the mask uh, yeah. front, been a like, learning curve for like I have my mask, right? Like so, this is this is me every day. If I'm not indoors at at home or in the office or in my car, if I'm at the sh the shopping center, grocery store, walking outside, this is this is every day, right? Yeah. But if I you missed. go outside, everyone is like this, right? right? So you know, I know that you know in in certain countries there. Are, they have concerns about masks where, you know, they think it could be unsafe or, you know, they think that, you know, someone wearing a mask could be trying to mask their identity, you know, like all these things. Right. You know, so there's a lot of different factors related to it. Right. You know, like in North America, could you walk into a bank wearing this mask and a hat? I probably couldn't. I yeah. mean, with this kind of hair and beard and whatever, depending on what I'm wearing, <laughs> You know, uh, sometimes I get a look and uh, yeah. people wonder but, if I'm no. going to start rifling things into my bag. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, yeah. I don't and I'm not. Yeah. But, you know, if you add a mask to my yeah. kind of general kind of uh, boho-esque, you know, yeah. appearance here. Uh, sure. Yeah. It, it, it starts to get a bit more confusing. And if I put sunglasses yeah. on and we're really running out of real estate to feel yeah, comfortable exactly, right. walking by, you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, <laughs> but you know, like, like this is the new normal, right? So, right. you know, um, everywhere you go, everyone you see is, they just look like this, right? And now that there is what, what mask is that not to get into? So, so this like, is a, a KF94, right? Yeah. So it's, they call these like kind of like trifolds. Yeah. So it comes out like this, you open it like this. Yeah. Um, you open it like this. It has like this metal piece up here that kind of fits to your nose. A little right? wire around your nose, yeah. Yeah, a little wire. Um, you kind of fit it, right? That's some, that's a disposable. That's a disposable. <laughs> yeah. 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 So they recommend that you you probably only wear this once. Yeah. But the thing is, they they had some they had some uh, kind of studies where you know you could probably wear it one or two times, right? And they and they recommend that. You know, you don't touch the insides because, you know, obviously that's, you know, where you're protected, right? right? And you don't want germs going in there just in case you touch something, right? right? Sure. And and if you're going to reuse it, you know, uh, keep it uh, keep it dry, right? Because the thing is, these um, non-woven fabrics, um, the reason they're effective in, in filtering out germs and stuff is they have kind of like a, a static component to it. Mm. Right. And that static is what keeps filters things out. So if it gets wet, it loses that function. Oh, I right? see. So there are specific masks that have like, you know, um, lack of a better term, kind of like an anti-liquid uh, protection. And those are, um, you know, surgical um, medical masks. Right. Mm -hmm. So they have liquid protection for blood and, you know, bodily fluids and stuff like that. Right. right? But they also have the filtration. But standard masks don't have that liquid protection right. and, and it gets wet, it loses that capabilities, right? So mm. so what like experts in Korea were saying is when you have a mask and you put it on, don't touch the mask, 
right? Mm-hmm. You know, don't keep touching the mask because you know you put like you know, outside or inside, or, really, basically. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, the most important thing is don't touch the inside, right? Fair enough. Um, yeah. 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 Because yeah. you don't but, know yeah. hands and da 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 da, da right? Mm-hmm. I mean, who knows, right? It's all part of this kind of protective protocol that way. Um, yeah. yeah. But you know, I, I I have I have like you know masks in my office, right? Just in case I forget it. You know, masks right. at home. I have a few in my car. I mean, in my car, I have disinfectant spray and I have sanitizer, right? right? So when I go outside, I come back in, I sanitize. Or you know, when the kids are coming in the car, it's like here, sanitize your hands. Um, it's just you know, it just becomes habit, right? And new layers, new yeah. layers of the kind of new normal the big yeah take into the way we we operate and the things we need and yeah we do right yeah absolutely because south korea got another spike even despite all this there was another breakout there was kind of, yeah you know this still happens so yeah. elaborate on that just for a sec like this doesn't take much for this no it doesn't again either that's, yeah. yeah that's the so thing. That's why we're so, doing all this, right? So a little while ago, like, um, like, you know, in kind of like entertainment districts, right? You know, where people are going to bars and clubbing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they had some cases. And so they ordered like bars to shut down and stuff like that. But, you know, with social distancing easing up, you know, they started opening up again clubs and stuff like that. And I understand, you know, um, you know, it's a venue to let out, right? And I mean, obviously, when I was younger, I... I, I I participated as well, right? Also, but, when I was, also when I was younger, not mine. Yeah, you know. yeah. I love the people, but, not the uh, yeah, not the uh, beverages as much anymore. But anyways, yeah, it, exactly. Day, there you go. But uh, but yeah, fair enough. Like social environment. Yeah, yeah. So and what can I ask? and 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 so you know, um, a young gentleman in his twenties, you know, he got tested, and I don't think that it showed up as positive. But, you know, he was supposed to be uh, self-isolating. Mm. Um, but, you know, he decided to, he, he was going to go hit the clubs with uh, some friends. Um, and they went out and he ended up being uh, a positive case and spreading it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so. Um, from what was the kind of impact of that? Like. Yeah, it was quite an exponential number, I think. And then well, right, right now there's like, you know. So Korea had a point where we had zero new cases daily, right? Right. And so this is the reason why they lifted, you know, kind of social, you know, kind of reduced social distancing, you know, kind of let's get back to the real normal, you know, um, let's, let's start doing things the way we did before, but, you know, maintain your masks and, you know, there's sanitizer everywhere. Um, but then, you know, this happened, right? So there's probably like, you know, the first spike was probably like, you know, I don't know, 70 cases, but daily there's like anywhere from 10 to 20 cases still going. Oh, um, but hap- yeah. yeah. But what happened was they did contact tracing and they contacted like basically about 20,000 people who would have been in that general vicinity, right? Mm-hmm. Or who might've been at the club or might've been at the bar beside or any one of the places that these young guys went on their kind of bar hopping um, day. Um, and, and they started testing everybody, right? right. And they... Um, and they got people to come in and they contact, they, they started contacting people and saying, you know, um, you know, we know that, you know, you might have been at um, ABC club um, at whatever day. Were you there? Yes. Oh, well, you better get tested. Right? right. Because, you know, there's some positive cases. It's in the news. You know, we don't want you spreading it to your families. Right. Mm-hmm. So the, the biggest thing, the, one of the biggest things about Korea is, you know, the family is very important. Right. So they always tell people like, you know, you want to have your mask on and you always want to wash your hands and all this stuff. Because if you're someone who's out and about you're working or whatever, and you contract it, you don't want to bring it home. Right. Right. Um, to kids or grandparents or, you know, because seniors are the most at risk, right. You right. don't want to bring it home to your grandparents and then have, have, you know, complications with that. Right. So, yeah. so it's, it's really about respect as well too. Right. That, you know, people are, you know, just, you know, following these procedures on a daily basis as a function of respecting each other. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you know, with COVID it's kind of scary, right? Because it's not like a, 
just your general cold or a flu, there's true risk of, of, of people dying, right? And, and we're seeing around the world that, you know, um, there is a massive loss of life because of this, right? And sometimes um, I find, like, you know, the, the cases that we've seen, it, 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 it's based on irresponsibility, right? You know, so, you know, you should have been self-isolating, but you wanted to go out and have a good time, right? Um, nothing against this, but, you know, you should have been self-isolating, but you want to go ch to church to hang out with people, right? Yeah. But, you know, you were at risk. Maybe you should have stayed at home, right? You know, right. Um, it, but that led to, like, um, you know, massive cases of, like, 10,000 people, right? So the consequences wow. of that, right? Um, yeah. you know, I read the news um, yesterday, and they just started to charge people for breaking, um, you know, quarantine and stuff. So there was a, a guy who... Um, got tested, supposed to self-isolate. He broke quarantine. Um, and then so they put him somewhere else and he broke quarantine again and he just repeatedly did that, right? So I think they charged him to like four months jail, right? Um, wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Still doing it. Because, because now it's, it's a matter of public safety, right? You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But and I, mean, I mean, now, this, is, this is something even now that people, you know, important in in you know today's terms about what we're doing right now because yeah. this is still active mm -hmm. still alive lots of regions um you know daily case numbers still being reported yeah many regions um you know where it's going up uh so we're all just doing what we can to kind of you know do sure. our to help out and yeah. gain this and get back to yeah you know whatever yeah. form of normal and positive lifestyle yeah that we can yeah what um what did the Korean government say South Korean government say um with respect to this contact tracing and these privacy issues well like, so so the statement from the government on this was um you know, sure, you know, personal privacies are affected, but what they felt was public safety should take precedence, priority over, you know, minor kind of, you know, um, kind of inconveniences, right? So, so the thing is, they're not, they're not like contact I mean, tracing every single person. The guy, but think if you're the guy who's running the, you know, or the, or the woman who's kind of in these positions in government, yeah, you have to yeah. make decisions. But if you're skeptical of government, mm. it can be a real, you know, yeah. Yeah. trigger. So not to cut you off, but, you know, how did they navigate that kind of fine line? So they said uh, public health policy, you know, and um, public safety should uh, supersede privacy in this mm -hmm. case. Yeah. But... In context, I would imagine, mm -hmm. so that they kind of clearly define that, so people didn't just, you know, trip out on this. Well, I mean, it was a public statement, right? You know, the top health health um, kind of. I, I, they just said we're doing it. Here. Yeah, she said, you know, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, we 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 look, you know, we took into consideration that it could affect, you know, privacy. But, you know, we felt that public safety was number one, right? And, and the thing is, like, Korea is a, is a country where people are really, really critical of government, like, like big time, right? Um, there is a clear left and a right, you know? Right. Um, people are really for or against. And, yeah. and people are very quick to judge on the government's reaction to things. There's been a lot of disasters. There's been a lot of, like just a lot of things that have happened in Korea where people are very quick to blame the government, right? So mm -hmm. the government was kind of sitting on their heels because they needed to respond to this, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they didn't, if they didn't do anything, like if they didn't do contact tracing, I'm sure this would have spread even further. And mm -hmm. they would have been like the focal point of a lot of people's uh, digressive anger. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the government didn't do anything. They let this spread all this stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so it, it came at a point when the fear factor for people was really high. Right. And you this know, was it, just done direct. And this was just done direct through um, people's phones. Like 
through the service <laughs> providers. Is that right? As a so, telecom yeah. guy, you kind of know the, the path to. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, so, so, and so the emergency broadcast system, right? Yeah. So, so basically they take, you know, obviously they take your, your ID, right. They know who you are. Right. So they run your like, the, like social insurance number or social security number or national ID number. Right. And they find all the services that you're using. Right. Okay. Um, they have your phone number, right? So in Korea, your phone number is utilized for a lot of uh, identification purposes, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, certificates for banking and stuff like that. Right? Right. So, so they take your phone number, um, they use, you know, uh, cell tower triangulation, GPS on devices. So they have the ability to track your, your, your travels um, whenever your phone is on, right? So people turn off the GPS on their phone, right? All the time, location services, and stuff right. because it says, you know, if you turn it off, you won't be tracked. Well, the cell towers are tracking you, right? Right. Um, can. Um, and this is how you can use GPS, right? Um, and, and, and then besides that, um, they, they check your credit card usage, right? Your bank card, your debit card. So they know they could, they could basically pinpoint. So your cell phone says you've been here. Your credit card confirms that you've been here and it tells us what time you've been here, mm -hmm. right? And then what they'll do is they'll start taking, um, you know, information using CCTV cameras and all this stuff about potentially people who have been in these locations, right? Mm -hmm. and they'll find out, you know, who is, who has swiped their card here and that the total invasion of privacy, right? Totally. Sure. But yeah. uh, massively effective in containing uh, Corona, right? So is there a check to this? Is there a balance? Is there a, you know, we'll turn this system off at some point. You know, I don't not, know, right? I'll, I'll, let's say this, um, not yet. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Judging by the look on your face, not yet. Sure. I mean, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure they will, right? Or maybe they'll just stop using it and put it away. You right. know, like they'll just take this, put it on the shelf, right? And right. If, in and if anything other, happens again, they'll bring it back. Like, oh yeah, we had right. this, by the way, right? Right. I mean, they already, have all their they already have all their information. And like yeah. you just said it, like your phone's already tracking your location yeah. anyways. Yeah. 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 So. And that's for emergency services, right? right? And then, you know, like every, every cell phone, every um, device is connected to the network. Um, there's an emergency kind of messaging system, right? So, you know, if there's an earthquake or there's a disaster, you know, they need to communicate with people, right? And you get an alert that says, you know, um, you know, massive storm blizzard coming, right? right. But in Korea, um, basically, it was like, you get a, a message um, that says, um, in whatever region, um, there was a, a positive case, uh, this person lives in this neighborhood. They don't tell you who it is, yeah. um, where he's been. Um, please avoid these areas or be careful. If you've been in these places in and around these dates, um, please call this number. Please uh, go get tested, right? There's mm -hmm. a We're just not doing that over here. Yeah. We're just not doing that. Um, yeah. I appreciate both arguments. So case by case basis, but the objective is definitely to um, get around this thing and then, uh, you know, resume some semblance of normal living and keep kind of beating it away, mm -hmm. right? Until we find some effective treatment really, um, you know, kind of, uh, kind of long-term. I think, um, I think your face froze there as we're talking about it, but uh, but I'll kind of maybe keep keep flowing with that. Anyways, uh, well, there you are, you're back, which is yeah, good. That was about to get lonely around here, but um, well, well, <laughs> but I mean, uh, you know. but um, but look for our part uh, to maybe kind of sum all this up is we wanted to shed some light on, you know, what's being done over there, what's yep. effective, um, you know, as one of the first countries that was affected by this and has um, done a good job of managing it um, mm -hmm. generally speaking and uh, most feel that way um, it seems and yeah. then for our part um, 
trying to help, trying to help other regions and people and, yeah. you know, people who need it. So yeah. uh, we're facilitating, um, bridging, you know, we're, we're, um, we're working together to move some of that, you know, highly effective and qualified, um, yeah. you know, and licensed and, and technically sound yeah. product right from absolutely from uh, south korea and then other you know kind of partner locations as appropriate mm -hmm. um you know into north america we've got a lot of stuff approved you know fda um your sure. approvals other parts of the world um yeah as of this recording uh we're starting to work on canada but we haven't done that but probably by the time somebody watches this uh yeah. you know we would ideally expect to have that you know yeah. given that all these products check out as it is based on everything we've talked about so yeah. um, for those interested uh you know if you're looking for some guidance on some of this or trying to uh, uh procure some of this supply that you may mm -hmm. need for your business or reopening or similar i'll talk to you yeah maybe direct now um you know we're available so contact info is below to uh, to reach out uh, to us Dave, we'll keep doing the work as we do. Uh, our sleeves rolled up to try and help wherever we can, of course. And yeah. um, you know, I just thought it was a really uh, insightful and um, informative opportunity for us to kind of have this chat and share a lot yeah. of insights with other people. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the thing is, uh, the reason why we're we're doing it is because we've seen the effectiveness of you know some of these products and solutions in Korea in, in effectively putting this to to bed right again yeah. it's not a way yet it's kind of to bed it's kind of waking back up hopefully you can put it back to sleep but right. then being able to provide these supplies to people who really need it right so when there was a massive shortage of masks here in Korea there was a, a big fear factor Right. Mm -hmm. like how are we going to get masks for our kids? How are we going to get masks for ourselves? How are we going to get protected? Um, but, you know, you know, having been through that, you know, I understand what people could go through in, in many other parts of the world. And so if we could kind of play a part in um, providing um, an avenue to to, you know, supply the people who really need it, then, you know, hopefully we're, we're playing a part in, in, in helping kind of reduce this, right. Uh, yeah. And, and, and reduce the effects of the pandemic. Right. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's where we are. Right. And that's kind of the part we play and, and hope that we could be effective in doing that. Right. Well, 100%. I mean, each of us have different skills and experience that we can kind of lever into, absolutely. you know, into helping. So, uh, you and I, we know, uh, we know our roles and, yep. You know we're doing that work and um we just hope everybody is uh is safe out there and um you know listening to some of these uh insights taking the appropriate um precautions sure whether you're isolating or locked down or um looking to responsibly reopen so uh so that's dave thanks dave i'm chad Thank you. you can uh Check out my channel and subscribe to future stuff like this if you're feeling all this uh, it's valuable insight. And um, we're going to do some more of it. So uh, thanks, Dave. Thanks to everybody who watched. And I hope uh, you got something out of this. And um, we'll talk to you all soon.